Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, what is a junior Java developer expected to know? So let's get into it. Well, I, uh, as with all good answers, it kind of depends. It depends on a lot of things. Um, the thing is that you may think that when it comes to backend development uh, that the most important thing for you is to know the most amount of tools because you may have been i don't know where you where you come from but uh, depending on what angle you get into the industry or what channels you go through you may get a fairly wide range of ideas and opinions on what's most important and I can only speak for the people who um, I talk to, who, because there's a lot of people who ask me about front-end related things. And in that community, in JavaScript, the JavaScript community, it is very, very common that there, like the the requirements for getting a job is one thing, and that usually entails a lot of different tools and like different concepts to know about and best practices and all that good stuff. But for backend development, and I'm not saying especially for Java, but let's just call it for backend purposes, it's a little bit different. There's usually two buckets that things fall into. You have things that are relevant for the company, because usually there are two types of companies when it comes to hiring backend developers. You have people who are going to focus quite a bit on your ability to write efficient algorithms, your problem solving skills. And this is usually the case for companies such as say Google and like, not just Google, but other co companies as well, where there is a, like the code tests and so forth are very geared towards like, or rather they are, op some companies optimize their hiring process for hiring people that are simply smart. I mean, you don't have to know all the tools of the industry because it's fairly, I mean, the idea is that, you know, we hire smart people and we know that smart people are going to adopt these tools. But then you have the other side of the side of the coin where you have companies who are much more focused on having you be productive very quickly. And that's the hard part about this. So it's very, I can't give you an answer where, you know, what is going to be the most ex the, the exact thing depending on your situation but i can give you the, the two cases that you're going to find most commonly in the industry so let's start by talking about the algorithmic approach to things so when it comes to work, basically going to a company and th this is the beautiful part about it the only thing you really have to go on, on the, in these scenarios is the job description. If they're asking you for a bunch of tools and experiences with this and that, then you kind of know what things are about. If they don't have any tools or anything specific on, in the job description, it's very likely that what you're going to be tested on and what they're going to prioritize is just you having a good understanding of algorithms and knowing how to write an efficient, an efficient one to a given problem. And that basically comes down to you understanding algorithms and having a good sensation of problem solving. There's nothing much more I can say about it. Uh, in order to prepare for stuff like that or to be a, I mean, this is true for all developers, you have to have the ability to understand a problem and boil that down into an algorithm that can solve said problem. For a Java developer, what you're most likely going to find is a range of different concepts. It's most, li it's most likely not going to be so heavy with best practices and how we write software in the industry. It's more likely going to be a fairly simple data structure of some sort, I'm creating a stack or a queue or, I mean, I've had interviews for Java positions where like they asked me about the FISBUS, FISBUS algorithm. It's a very ranged type of thing. And this is probably the way that traditionally people are expecting things to go when you go to a job interview and that's one part of it and in back end this is absolutely true there are t tons of companies who hire you just based on this but if we are going to flip it over and say all right let's say that you have that pit bit covered because the fact of the matter is that learning an algorithm or learning how to solve problems in an algorithmic fashion comes down to solving problems over and over again and if you want to you know study interview questions and stuff of this nature you can do that as well 
I, I don't recommend going too far down that route because I think it encourages a very destructive behavior, but it is possible. The other side is, okay, what tools are relevant? So in Java, it's a very small ecosystem of tools that are going to be completely relevant. You know, you need, of course, to check your own region for this. But in general, you need to learn how to use Java, like okay, Java Enterprise Edition, and basically the parts that are most relevant for the Enterprise Edition, which is going to be the GPA or Java Persistent Archives. Like, in other words, you need to be uh, understand how to connect to a database, this sort of thing, right? You need to know about a application server of some sort. The most common one is probably Tomcat, Tomcat which is the one that I would suggest you have a look at. And then you, of course, you have Glassfish and you have JBoss and a few others, but Tomcat is probably going to be the safest best bet to start with. And apart from that, it comes down to just knowing Java, like really know, understanding the language, because the that's kind of the beauty and to some people the bad part about Java. It's a very small ecosystem. Well, I'm not. No, it's not a small ecosystem. Like there's a ton, a ton, a ton of packages, but most people kind of use the same thing. I mean, you can look into JMS, for example, messaging services and stuff of this nature. But I wouldn't suggest. I, I would state, kind of go out on a limb and say that that may not be the most important thing for a complete beginner. And we can talk about depending on what company you're going to go to. I mean, Spring, for example, is super popular, but it's not a given that every company that you apply for is going to use Spring or Spring Boot. They might just be using the native APIs and, or the native, native routing. They could, for all we know, still be uh, using Java Beans, and that's also something that could be relevant. And that's kind of... In, in Java, I think that the safest thing that you can do is to first and foremost really understand the native AP, native libraries the stuff that because that's most it's a very safe bet and once you know that stuff when it comes to tooling learning something like spring or spring boot is probably the absolute most safe thing you can do these are very good things a beginner can start with so the rule of thumb is to stick as close as, to, as possible to the actual the actual standard the java native standards and add maybe Tomcat to your repertoire. And then of course a database of some sort. My, MySQL is a very big and popular database that you can start off with. That's going to keep you fairly set and keep you, be, you should be fairly relevant for most Java positions if you do that. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to begin, beginner Java developers, you have two buckets that you're going to fall into depending on which company you apply for. You're, e you're going to either be asked to provide solutions to algorithms of some na nature. So in order to, for you to make it as a Java developer, as a beginner, make sure that you have a fairly good understanding of algorithms, data structures, all of this, this theoretical stuff that may not be all that useful in the real world all the time, but it is for recruitment purposes fairly relevant. The other side of it is to have an understanding of the basic tools because some companies care more about be you being productive as quickly as possible and then it comes down to an application server. Something like Tomcat is a very good start. A database, something like MySQL is a very good start. Uh, learning uh, the uh, the Java Enterprise Edition, like uh, persisting things to a database, so stuff of this nature is also a very good start. And for extra credit, having a look at Spring and, Pro and to these days Spring Boot is fairly relevant as well is going to have you fairly set. Have a great day.